So Douglas Stuck asks, why do bees only choose certain pollens? I have lots of honeysuckle in my bees in where I live, and my bees don't even touch it. Well, we'll pick on honeysuckle for just a moment. Honeysuckle, it has to be a really good year for honeysuckle before bees will work it because uh, their tongues can't reach the, the, the nectar in the bottom of the flower. You'll see bumblebees and things like that on honeysuckle way before you see honeybees. But every once in a while, it'll secrete nectar so well that there's such a puddle in the flower that the bees can get it. And bees, not only pollen, but also nectar, bees are smart enough and sensitive enough to know which is best and they go there first. In, in the case of... Uh, of nectar, they'll go wherever the sugar content is the highest. You'll see something blooming wide open. It's obvious, you know, like even in the case of tulip poplar, sometimes you can see, literally see nectars of uh, uh, puddles of nectar in the bottom of the flower, but the bees aren't working it. They're on the blackberries. Well, that would tell me that the blackberries at that moment were putting out nectar with a higher sugar content. And they do the same thing with pollens. They go to the pollens with the best nutrition. A good example of this is when, you know, there's really basically two kinds of pollen. There's windblown and then the non-windblown, where the type of pollen where the, the plants are dependent on an insect moving the pollen from plant flower to flower for pollination. And in most cases, the vast majority of the cases, the windblown pollen is inferior. And if the other type of pollen is available, you'll see the bees not working things like pine trees or oaks or uh, corn or things like that where they have windblown pollen. Uh, you'll see bees on corn in the summer sometimes collecting pollen simply because there isn't anything better available. So they know which one's better and that's where they go. Yeah. You know, a lot of times whenever we have certain things out, we don't see the bees on it. And a lot of times, you know, newer beekeepers wonder why sometimes some flowers bees don't like to go near. And, you know, bees just know what they what they want. And, that's you know, yeah. yeah, you know, that just all depends. You know, you know, the bees know more than we do. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, a yeah. lot of crops that are, you get paid I pollinated crops that the bees don't care much for. Cranberries is one of them. The, the growers would always have us move the bees in after the flowers were 20% in bloom because if, and they'd have us put the bees right in the middle of the cranberry bogs in that area, because if the bees tuned into something out, side or beyond the cranberry bog frogs they'd fly a quarter mile over the bogs to get to something better so uh, and then if there was nothing else blooming of course they'd work the cranberries but the farmers would always have us bring them in at 20 percent bloom so the bees wouldn't get used to what was outside their area yeah definitely next question another question from douglas duck and he asks should i say why do bees choose certain nectars for making honey I guess so we, guess he, he, well, yeah, we just answered that. They go to the, the nectar with the highest sugar content. Yeah, probably just another little thing there. Yeah. Um, now we have Randy in here, so I'm sure we recognize Randy. He was on the last chat that, you know, we did. And he says, here on my farm in Ohio, I have 50 to 60 black locust trees in three years in a row, no nectar. Any thoughts, Bob? Uh, Mother Nature. I mean, so many crops are that way. Sourwood's that way. Some years it blooms and we make a lot of honey and other years it blooms even better and we don't make any. Uh, I, sometimes I just half jokingly say the planets didn't line up just right. I don't have an answer for, you know, all the times we things make honey or don't, even though they're blooming. And black locust is that way. So we have it here too. We have plenty of it. And some years it just comes in like crazy, and some years it doesn't come in at all. Um, this year we didn't get a heavy bloom, but we actually made a little. Some years it blooms quite heavily, and we don't see any at all. Black locust has the potential to be an extreme, extremely heavy flow for about seven to ten days. It's not a long-time producer. It doesn't go weeks and weeks like some crops do. I have a fun little story. When I was back in Oregon beekeeping bees, there was a a little town next to mine called Gold, Gold Hill, Oregon. And it's an old town. And they have, at that time, this is, gosh, this is almost 40 years ago. At that time, they had huge black locust trees on their main street, big trees, probably two and a half feet, you know, uh, in diameter. And uh, 
one day I was driving through town, nice warm spring day, beautiful weather. It had been beautiful for a couple of days and my bees were definitely making honey. I knew that. And I was driving through Gold Hill and I could see black patches under the trees in the street, you know, right where the cars were driving. And I was really puzzled by that, what, you know, what that was all about. And I stopped and I actually saw bees working the street. And I went out to walk in the street and touched it. And the trees were secreting nectar so heavily that it was dripping on the street. So that obviously was a tremendous black locust year for us. And then the next year they made none. It bloomed just as much, but we didn't make any. So kind of crazy.